Good morning, friends, family, loved ones, fans, friends. Uh, I think I said that. Good morning. Welcome to Friday. Hope you are all doing very, very fabulously. Now, this is going to be a reasonably, well, quick live today because you can, uh, I'm off to the hairdressers shortly. Now, you can always tell when I'm due for the hairdressers, particularly if you're looking back at any kind of lives that we've done because I always have my hair pulled back or not out and doing stuff. So it kind of gets shoved up back up under here. Anywho, uh, so welcome to Friday. What are you celebrating? What's been really awesome and amazing in your worlds? Let me know. Uh, what I thought I would talk about today is just a funny kind of little thing that happened yesterday. Um, and it, yeah, I'll just let you know what happened yesterday. So I, I did a handover session with a client of mine. We were we finished up our time and actually is a, is a great friend of mine. And we were chatting about the content that she's come up with. We were talking about the posts that she's been doing. There's a couple of things that came up. One of them, and I thought that sometimes we, I, I thought this would be helpful because sometimes we tell ourselves bullshit right? Like, let's just call it that. Like, we tell ourselves bullshit in order to keep ourselves safe, to delay things and stuff like that. We can often just come up with crazy excuses and things. So she said, startup business. She's had previous businesses before that have done really, really well, has since sold them and is now embarking. Hey, James, happy Friday now embarking into the world of consulting in, in her particular industry. So really like super niched uh, or niched if you're in the States. Um, and, you know, she's really excited about it, right? But she's, she's like, oh, so, you know, I've got to advertise for more likes before I can start putting out my free thing. So one of the ways that we can build our list and we can connect with our audiences, you know, is, is by putting out great free content, getting people to opt in, join our email lists, and then we can email market to them and we can market to them on online by, by sharing our messages, right? And she'd said, well, can't do that until I, I start getting more likes. And so I've just said, oh, okay, why does that need to be true? And she said, well, I've got to have people to talk to. And I said, well, that's bullshit. <laughs> and I just actually just said like that. I said, that's bullshit. Actually... <coughs> excuse me, actually, that's not even true. Because if you are advertising, we don't generally advertise just to the people who follow our pages, right? We don't just advertise to our friends. We don't just advertise to those people who have already clicked like on our page. Generally, what we would do is advertise to a wider audience to be able to attract new people in. So I said, actually, as a byproduct, of you putting your, your free stuff out there, advertising that and growing your list, your page will grow naturally. <clears throat> and, and I said, I, like the alternative is, you know, if you're spending $5 a day on marketing to get new people uh, onto your page and profile, good morning, Georgina, then if you're only spending $5 a day, let's say that it's a dollar alike for new people coming on board and you want to get to 400, it's going to take you 16 weeks. That's four months before you can start to then actually market to, you know, your audience. I so said, you don't want to wait four months. That's just like, that's crazy town. Like no one wants to do that. And the way that Facebook tends to work, you know, if you went and wanted to spend $800 this week on generating new likes, they're generally going to be a whole lot more expensive because it's just kind of like a blah, 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 verbal vomit all over the internet with, uh, you know, trying to get new people attached to your page. So I think one of the things that is, is really important is to really be aware. Number one, the first thing is to be super aware of the bullshit that you're telling yourself and how are you holding yourself back on putting you out there that is just actually not true. You know, some of the other stuff that comes up, and you know, I've worked through this and sometimes I have this come up. It's like, well, what if no one watches my lives? Uh, what if no one attends live? What if I'm sitting here talking to like the the the, the nobody, <laughs> and it's like that can be really awkward, and it and it used to be a really big fear of mine. And sometimes if I'm in a in a moment where my confidence isn't you know right up there, or if I'm in a bit of a state of anxiety or overwhelm, 
and I go live and, you know, there might be one or two people, I can be like, oh, you know, it's, it's awesome that those one or two people are on, but, you know, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with the message? You know, what's wrong with the, the alignment? You know, why is this not working? Blah, 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 all those stupid self-talk. And what we need to do is just go, well, actually stop it. The people who need to see it, the people who need to hear it will actually hear it. They will come in. They, they may not be there live, but I know a lot of you guys, um, you know, watch the replays of mine. For example, if you can't be on live because I'm a little bit, you know, it's not as scheduled. Oh, hey, Molly. I've got my little kittens coming to say hello. Um, you know, you might not have the people show up live watching you or interacting with you, but, you know, like that there are so many people that catch the replays. There are so many people that will find you somewhere along the way and then just binge watch everything that you say. I had... Um, a lady who attended an event of mine last year, she, she actually messaged me at one point. She said, oh my God, Nicola, I have just found your YouTube channel. It's all I've watched all weekend. Total binged, uh, total just like uh, like lockdown. Uh, I was like, oh, wow. You know, well, you would have seen a lot of changes because I've got videos up there since 2011. Uh, they're not very good. Well, the content's great. The, the hair, not so much. <laughs> and the confidence is not there. You know, it's a lot, it's a lot different. But I guess where I'm going with that is that whether there's one person on live, whether there's no people on live, whether there's, hey, Nat, whether there's, um, you know, 100 people on live, it actually doesn't even really matter. It's just a matter of you putting yourself out there, getting it out there, trusting in the process, knowing that you showing up is going to resonate and be relevant for people. So, you know, like when you start going to the gym you know that if you keep going to the gym and if you're consistent and if you do the work at the gym, that the payoff will come. You will get the muscles, you will tone up, you will lose weight, you will gain weight, you will do you know, whatever the, your goal is, right? Because everybody goes to the gym for different purposes and different reasons. Your stamina might go, go up. Um, you know, whatever the case might be, your skill level increases, right? If you're consistent and you'll get that goal. So you can't just kind of like turn up at the gym and do one class and then look at, I've got spaghetti arms, so please excuse my spaghetti arms, and go, oh, yes, I've just done one workout. Like, where the fuck are my muscles? <laughs> you know, it doesn't work like that. You know, you've got to, it's got to be consistent. You've got to, you've got to do the work consistently in order to be able to build the muscle. And so your marketing, your visibility, your lives, your, your messages that you're putting out there, it takes time. So just be aware of the BS that you're telling yourself. I don't know why I said BS and not bullshit just then. That's kind of funny. Um, and just be aware of like how you might be holding yourself back because I'm sure that you guys don't want to delay for four months in order for the timing to be right or for the ducks to be in a row because the truth of the matter is there's never a good time. There's never the right time. The ducks are never going to be in a row. It's like trying to herd kittens, you know, it'll send you bat in around the bend. Uh, so that's that little sermon. Um, oh, the other thing that came up and out of the conversation yesterday with, with my friend and client actually as well, which was really funny. It's like, how do you come up with all of these ideas for stories? So you guys know that I tell pretty much every day I give you a metaphor um, and it's the same in the blogs that I do. It's the same with pretty much everything, like all the writing that I do, the, the way that I speak. It's like I'm like, well, it's a little bit like da, 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 da. Now, I don't usually have those planned, like the snot metaphor. If you haven't watched yesterday's video, uh, freaking hilarious. I was talking about the, the congestion and snot in your head and clearing that out and that We've got stuff cluttering up our businesses, our money, our spirituality, our energy that needs to be kind of cleared. Like snot, snot doesn't deserve to live in your head. Like that crap needs to be gone. So if you haven't listened to yesterday's video, go have a listen to it. Um, but she said, like she said, you know, you, you just you just come up with them all the time. And I think, and this is it, number one, it's a practice, I suppose. It's a bit of a muscle. I'm always looking for, and I think this is the key message for today. I'm always looking for ways to articulate and explain a, a piece of thinking or a lesson for you. So, a really funny story. 
Yesterday on our morning walk, so Dom and I have been walking at six o'clock in the morning to get our walk done because it's starting early, right here, and it's freaking hot. It was 30 degrees Celsius for those of you in the States. It's like hot. Um, 30 degrees overnight here last night after a top of 46 or something yesterday and something similar today. So it was super hot. So we've been walking early so that he can get out to work and do what he needs to do. And we were talking about our, our dreams, like the actual dreams that we'd had overnight. I thought, oh my God, I had this really crazy dream. And it was about me telling stories, actually me telling metaphors. And there was a guy and, a, and, and an older woman in this room in my dream, right? And they were the kind of sitting there as like I was delivering a workshop or something. And the gentleman said, well, you know, not everybody is going to understand what you're saying, Nicola. And I said, well, actually, you're right. And I said, this is why I tell stories. It's how I really endeavor in every workshop I do or every video I do or every piece of writing that I do. I try to make it really relevant for each individual so that they've got something to relate to. And I've looked at the older woman and I said, you know, it's a practice, right? But the metaphor that I might say is like, you know, when, when you're learning how to put yourself out there, it's a bit like learning a piano. So, you know, when you're a child, you, you learn to play the piano, right? I can imagine you sitting on a stool and your grandmother standing next to you because, you know, that was who taught you piano. And it's like, there was no way that I could possibly have known that. So in my dream, I just had this intuition that I knew this woman's, uh, a bit about this woman's childhood. And in the dream, I had like this spiritual solar plexus punch, just like a and I like hit the roof and I came down and it was just, anyway, that was, it was a bit tripped out. And, um, you know, the, the thing that came back to me is like, well, you know, I make it relevant for, for him. I can make it relevant for her. I can make it relevant for James. I can make it relevant for Nat. You know, the stories and the metaphors that I tell are uh, in order for you to be able to join the dots in your head so that you get the meaning of what I'm saying rather than me just being all intellectual and saying, well, this is what you need to do. The message needs to be constructed in this way. And this is how you come up with that. You know, it's in order for you to be able to tell that. So that was a little bit of an aside. I just thought it was a really freaking weird dream. And anyway, like I, the, this solar plexus punch was like the, the reminder for me, just like bang. Yeah, that's something that I do without really very much effort. Um, and it was a little weird. So anywho, um, enough of the freaky stuff. So the moral of the story is this, where are you holding yourself back? Always be looking for different ways that you can articulate your point, your message, your, your teaching, your learning, your coaching, whatever it is that you do, your product. Think of different ways that you can help people join the dots. And a really great segue for that is, well, it's a little bit like, yeah trust that that makes sense. Hope that's helpful, guys. Please let me know. Well, of course it's helpful, but let me know that it was helpful. Give me some of that external validation on a Friday. So I'm celebrating just feeling really like aligned and excited and I'm really excited about this new course, Rebel with a Cause, that we've, you've got a week to enroll, maybe a little over a week. We start on the 28th of January. Um, Yes, it's public holiday Monday here in Australia, which we're not getting into the politics of that. Um, so I'm excited about that. I'm so excited. I've seen my clients this week just do really freaking amazing things. Um, you know, people making seven and a half grand in a day, people putting out great content. They're just freaking winning. And it's really inspiring, actually, considering that so many people wait until the end of January, which means February, to, to get any momentum kind of kicked off and started. So I'm just celebrating the crap out of them this week. Um, something that I've noticed that has been done really well. Let me think about that. I hadn't thought about that. Um, actually, do you know what? I reckon, I think the thing that I've seen that's been done really, really well this week has been you guys actually your uh, um <laughs> your 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 staying power I guess with me is like I just want to say thank you for that I sent out an email to my list yesterday I was talking about clearing space and I sent out an email just had this intuition to send it out another email to, which I don't normally send to in a day uh half past four last night I sent out an email saying, um, essentially letting people know what my plans are for the year and how 
I'm going to be communicating with them. And a bit like what I've said with you guys yesterday, you know, I sent out the, the I, I deleted a whole bunch of people yesterday. I sent out an email just saying, this is what I'm going, this is what I'm doing. You know, if you're still aligned and if you still feel like you want to hear from me, then that is freaking awesome. You know, I'm so excited um, whether you open up your emails once a week, twice a week, once a day, whatever, you know, I really appreciate your, um, like you, you being part of my community, but you know what, if you want to unsubscribe, it's totally fine. Cause it's a different energy this year. I'm doing things a little different, a lot differently actually this year. Um, I was petrified guys. I was petrified uh, for all the reasons I said in the live yesterday as well, like all the pride stuff and rah, rah, rah. But Guess how many people unsubscribed from between 4.30 in this morning? Guess how many people from like the 9,800 or something um, that I've got left on my list after deleting a whole bunch? Guess how many people unsubscribed? 10. Just 10. I had the best open rate that I've had in a long time on that email. Um, I've had, thank you, Georgina. She said, I loved your email last night. I appreciate that. Um... You know, I genuinely think it's important for you guys to create space in your world for what you want in there. And some people don't want me in their worlds and that's totally fine. Totally, totally fine. Um, and some people want me in their in their worlds and that's really great. That's fine and awesome and, and fabulous as well. So I sent that out. So I'm actually really happy and really proud and I'm celebrating the fact that um, that you guys just kind of want to keep hanging out because it's fun and this is fun and, and I... I think it's really important work that I'm doing and I think it's really important work that you're doing and, you know, I'm just really grateful. So that's me for today. Let me know what you're celebrating. Let me know what you're really proud of this week and let me know something that you have noticed someone else do really, really well, someone that you perhaps admire or respect, um, something that they've done really cool, perhaps the way, in the way that they've led, in the way that they've thrown themselves out there, in the way that they've committed to themselves, whatever it is. You know, it might just be that they made a really amazing dinner. I don't know, whatever it is. Hey, back, happy Friday. All right, everyone, I'm going to go sign off and go and get my hair did because no one wants to see me with my hair down like it isn't in the state that it's in at the moment. So have a really amazing Friday. I may or may not talk to you later on today. Depends what pops out of my brain. Most of all, though, get out there, help some people, get visible and go kick some freaking ass. Happy Friday.